a lot of us deal with financial trauma either from our background or bad experiences we have had before um, or growing up and we never realize that that is the reason why no matter how much we know about money no matter how much information how many courses we do how many budgets we do like we still we just never seem to figure out money now I am a first uh, generation wealth builder, which means that I just, I didn't grow up in money. I'm not a trust fund baby. That sounds very funny to me now. Um, I, I, I'm just not, I, I don't know what it is to grow up with money. I grew up in poverty. I remember lacking so many things and lacking so many times and growing up that has been my experience. And I realized in my adulthood now that I, have had to deal with a lot of um, poverty and money trauma so that I can be able to break through and actually experience abundance in personal finance or rather in my personal finances. So in today's episode, I want to share a bit about my story, how I was able to deal with money trauma and poverty trauma. I'd also like to talk to you um, about exactly what financial trauma looks like, what are the telltale signs that you may have some financial trauma and what to do about it so that it doesn't get in the way of your financial um, prowess or just you experiencing abundance in your personal finances. My name is Coach Susan, and as usual, I'm very happy to have you guys join me. Financial trauma comes from years and years of, ex of bad experiences with regards to money or even chronic stress um, or rather continual stress uh, because of lacking either basic needs like food, shelter, education. Um, it can also come from an experience you had after your formative years. So maybe you lost money because of a particular investment or you were conned um, or you lost your job at a time of your life where you were not very liquid. So you experienced a lot of like lack, worry, anxiety, panic. All these things could contribute to money trauma or financial trauma. Now, as an adult, I discovered a while back that I have a lot of what I'd call poverty trauma because growing up, I do not recall having money or rather our family having money. I just remember lacking a lot, worrying a lot about things that a child um probably shouldn't have to worry about but eventually life catches up right so i remember wondering like if um my parents were going to make fees for the next term worrying whether i was gonna be among the people who are sent back home um i compared my life with other children we i, I mean when i tell you we were poor i mean poor um at some point we lived in like amabati house yeah um for people who are not Kenyans, Mabati just means iron sheets. Um, so I have a lot of memories, like good memories growing up. But one of the things that I have come to realize in my adulthood, especially when I started like um, going to school and now I'm about to graduate and I'm worried about whether I'm going to get a job, that used to come a lot. So generally because of like my poverty experience, I grew up having a bit of like a a scarcity mindset towards money. I never experienced what abundance is. And so I've always known money is scarce. Like I've always known if I, like I, I'll never have enough money. So I had a lot of anxiety around money. In fact, one of the things that I was joking um, about with one of my friends was how, while we were just graduating and waiting for a job, I remember saying, that if I could just get a job that pays me 20K per month, I would be okay. Like, I felt like that is the best thing that could ever have happened to me. Like, getting a job that pays me like 20 or 25K um, Kenya shillings, I felt like that was a lot. So that, that was the kind of, like poor <laughs> that um, I'm talking about, right? So eventually I get a job. I got a job a couple of months after I graduated and I immediately got into um, an investment company, right? Interestingly, you need to be careful about what you're saying because my first salary was actually 20,000 as an intern, right? So I was very excited. I was like, oh my God, like this is it. Obviously everyone who's been down that road before you quickly realize how little um, 20,000 is right so i had a lot of like money trauma i i used to fear 
um making money and and you know just wondering like will i even have money next month will i have a job next month like the worries and the fears just didn't go away even with getting a job right um and then unfortunately the place i was employed i was the real definition of overworked and underpaid so eventually i got confirmed and um now they doubled the salary and it was forty thousand. and one of the things that really um one of the things that i experienced while i was working in that company was the fact that um i mean i was there for three and a half three close to three and a half years and my salary remained forty thousand all through right and you know life is changing um the bills are increasing but i mean so throughout my whole employment life like the three and a half years i was actually in employment i was just staying there i knew i could maybe probably apply for other jobs i thought of options to actually get out because for a fact my salary was not going to increase as fast i was not going to make it as well um in this company but like i held on to that job i didn't want to apply for other jobs i was afraid that uh, my bosses would find out if i go uh, for in interviews and stuff like that so even if I would go to the office like at eight, we'd work from eight sometimes till past midnight. I held on to the job. I was like, I cannot let this job go because if I let it go, my life is over. This is my only source of income. So it it was something that I had to deal with. And like as much as I wanted to get out, as much as I knew um, as a finance specialist, I could probably get a better paying job elsewhere. I just found myself sticking there because I was so afraid. It would scare me to my very core just to think, oh my God, what, hap what, what would happen to me if I lost this job or if I don't have this 40K? So it was pretty much, it wasn't like a lot of money because that's 40,000 gross. Once all the deductions have been done you have like 20 something thousand left to um to cater for all your other expenses right and so i feel like the whole lack um and never having enough kind of like followed me into my adulthood now where did the turn happen or where did the change happen the change happened when i lost my job that thing that I was so afraid of, that thing that I was like, oh my goodness, I just don't want to think about this, happened to me. I had a bit of savings, maybe savings that could have lasted me a month or two maximum, but I didn't have like an emergency fund. I didn't have anything and my fear had just come true, right? Um, Obviously, I was down for like a month. I was super depressed. I didn't believe, I, I was just like, you know, those moments that you act, actually just don't know what to do and interestingly throughout this time you know i'm working i'm working in investment investments um you know we are managing big portfolios i can say that kenyans actually are uh, very active investors like i'd interacted with people who are really moneyed and i'd started picking up mm, this is you know this is what rich people do this is how rich people think i just didn't think it ever applied to me right Throughout the three years, I had learned a couple of things. I'd, you know, I'd set up like my money market fund that I never took very seriously. I would just put whatever it is that I got. Like I, I didn't quite take personal finance seriously until when I lost my job. So obviously I went through this whole season of like feeling like my life is over. Um, and <laughs> you know, um, just all those fears that come to play when you're like, um, I don't have an income. I have people depending on me. Um, because of course with Poverty comes like a lot of black tax as well. So it was a whole, it was the most scary season in my life, right? So after, uh, you know, I'm done, uh, you know, wallowing and now I'm starting to think, okay, what do I do now that I do not have a job? I went on to my Instagram and because, um, because I was working in investments, I'd get a lot of people or rather in an investment company, I'd get a lot of people asking me questions about investments. They'd ask me, oh, we are in a chama and we need, uh, you know, we have this X amount of money. Where would you recommend us to put this money or even a personal friend? So I was like, I'm jobless. Um, 
I am just in the house and I'm doing nothing. So let me just go to my, like, I, I didn't want to stay idle. I was losing my mind. So I just went to my Instagram and decided like once every week or twice every week, I'd give people money tips. I'd be like, oh, this is how a money market fund works. This is how treasury bills and bonds work because that was my bread and butter. So I was really already good at it, right? So I was doing it as a pastime while I was applying for other jobs and doing a bit of online writing just so that I can make some money. Um, So it was like a layover to the next thing. I was like, I think I'm just going to be uh, giving, I was doing it for fun, be giving people money tips um, on my Instagram page. And then eventually I'll get a job and I don't have to be idle anymore. Um, and I kept applying and I kept applying for jobs and I kept, and I kept getting, uh, regrets and regrets. Um, this whole time, my Instagram page is starting to grow, right? Um, and people are starting to inquire, oh, do you actually offer consultations? Or if I wanted to talk to you about this, um, would you, do you offer such services? Obviously, because, um, in that moment I started realizing, oh, there's actually a business opportunity here. Um, and I'm surrounded by very good mentors. I consulted a coach and I was able to see actually this is a business that I can do. And that is ideally how my company, the Legacy Hub KE was born. And that is where my journey started. I, you know, and the more I've been able to understand myself as an adult, I've had uh, things happen in my life that uh, demanded that I actually go to therapy and work on myself is when I started realizing that in between all the other traumas I have, I actually have money trauma. And for me, it uh, manifested as a scarcity mentality. It manifested as, you know, holding money, a lack of... um creativity and thinking outside of the employment box now this is just my story which i've been able to turn around by one being able to identify my toxic money mindsets and what is actually stopping me from achieving the greatest version of myself um and i realized like most of it was coming from a place of like i am so afraid of poverty guys it keeps me up at night i never want to go back to it but if you're not careful that very thing that you're very afraid of um because you just focus on how af uh, how much afraid of it you are and you don't focus on what you can do about it and what you need to unlearn and the things you need to learn that might actually end up happening to you just the same way i was super afraid of losing my job and that's exactly what um happened to me because i didn't i wasn't thinking out of the box like if i'm so afraid of losing my job maybe i should be i should get creative and start applying for other jobs expose myself i i was just afraid and the fear crippled me and so i just never did anything about it so when the job loss happened i was left stranded that's what's happening to a lot of us because of our money trauma we are afraid of poverty we are afraid of losing money we are afraid of, um, you know, being conned. And because of that, you just sit tight. You never do anything about it. You just sit with the fear. Because of that inaction, due to the trauma, um, the financial trauma you have, either from your background or from bad experiences you have, you just end up never doing anything about your finances. And that, guys, that catches up with you. Your success when it comes to money matters is... 20% what you know, like head knowledge, I should save, I should invest. And 80% your behavior around money. Like how many of us guys know we should save, we should invest, we should probably um, get out of debt. But even with all the head knowledge and the information we have on social media, in books, we just never quite seem to figure this thing out. Like it's like I know all these things, I just don't know why I'm doing it or rather why I'm not doing it. This could be a sign that you have some financial trauma that you need to deal with, okay? Money decisions are not made on an Excel sheet. Yes, we do Excel sheets, we budget, we have our trackers and everything, but when you make money decisions is when you're with your friends, it's when you're afraid, when you're bored, when you're angry, when you're happy and you're feeling all, you know, excited, that's when money decisions are made. So how your subconscious mind makes financial decisions is very important. So I just want to um, quickly share with you guys, like, 
signs that you may actually have financial trauma and then i'm just going to give you some quick tips on what you can do to deal with it okay so the first sign that you may have some financial trauma is you are a total avoider like you run away from or avoid dealing with your money situation at all costs like you have known for a while you need to look at your spending you need to track your spending you just don't do it money avoiders will quite literally buy from a supermarket and maybe you can tell me in the comment section if you relate to this um you can buy it you you go shop may, maybe in a mall or in the supermarket and right outside the door there's a bin you throw away the receipt you're done like i just don't want to know exactly how much i've spent right um so if you have an avoidance personality, that means like you have like there, there's a level of anxiety and there's a level of like intimidation that comes with uh, just you thinking about your money. So for you not to feel intimidated, for you not to feel, for you not to um, face your finances because you already know, oh my God, I know things are terrible there. You avoid, avoid, avoid. Now, if you avoid something, it means that there's something you're terribly afraid of in that area. So that is one of the telltale signs that you may actually have a money trauma or poverty trauma. You do not want to face your finances. You probably know you should sit down and talk to a, let's say like a financial advisor or, or a coach like myself, or you know for a fact like you need to deal with your debt. You know you need to get out of mobile loans. You know you need to stop... Um, a couple of bad money habits that you're already aware of and every year when you're doing your new year goals you're like i'm gonna stop this i'm gonna stop this but you just never actually come to intentionally face your finances and deal with them that could be a sign of financial trauma the second sign is actually overspending and chronic impulse buying what do i mean by chronic impulse buying this person will spend money even if they don't have money. This person wants a handbag, they get a handbag. This person wants uh, to go to Dubai, they will take a loan to go to Dubai. Like nothing stops this girl or this guy. Like they will spend, 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 spend. I have a friend of mine who keeps telling me the reason why she spends like that is like to to show poverty like uh, let me just say it in soa like nataka kuonesha umaskini mimi sitairudi kwa umaskini like it's just an attitude where you feel like i just I will never go back to poverty. I know what it is to lack. I never used to have food, so I will go to all the restaurants in the world. I never used to afford clothes, or my mom never used to afford good clothes for me, so I will have closets full of clothes I don't wear. I will buy every new phone. I will travel anywhere I want to go. Like It's like you are trying to overcompensate for everything you lacked as a child or everything you've lacked in, a, in, a, in, in your life in the past, and now that's how you're dealing with the trauma, the trauma of lack you deal with it so most overspenders and most impulse buyers are actually trying to compensate for something it's also a sign that you're trying to um deal with either boredom or some negative feelings that you don't want to deal with so listen guys money is way more mental than it is like um financial you understand so that is another sign so if you find yourself like you're a chronic spender and you keep wondering why did i even do that like why did i buy this why did i go here i know i knew i couldn't afford it but i just couldn't stop myself that's a sign of financial trauma okay the third telltale sign is um, overspending, uh, rather underspending. You underspend and you don't spend on yourself and not because you don't have money. It's actually because you prefer hoarding, okay, and you have a scarcity mindset. Now, that was your girl here, all right? I would literally walk around looking pretty homeless. Like, I have money to fix my hair, but I just won't do it. Um, my shoe is almost like it's falling apart, but I'm just like, I will find a, a way to rationalize why buying that shoe is wasting money. Like I just had a very hard time, like, especially even after, like now when I started my business and my business started doing well, I had money, but I still had a very hard time spending. And the worst bit of it is I'd see people spend and I'd be thoroughly offended. I'm like, these people are wasting money. Cause they are ni kutupa pesa, watu wanapenda kuwaste do. And you're, you're, you're feeling bad. Like why not spend on yourself? Right. Um, 
and so a lot of holding uh personalities are because like you have that scarcity mindset i used to feel like if i spend on hair if i spend on uh, shoes if i actually go on a trip if i um just do something nice for myself or even give give in charge give to charity contribute to someone's like thing i'd feel like pesa itaisha like my money will just isha and like i won't have any money left so if you're a chronic holder whether you have money or not like you just have a hard time spending and that actually eventually catches up with you when you're trying to like build your wealth because i also had a fear of investing i'd rather have my money in my bank account or in my mpesa where i can log in and see the balance it used to give me some level of peace and security when i can see like the money is still intact i was so afraid of losing money that i'd literally like keep checking my bank balance just to confirm that the money is still there so obviously when someone talks to me about investing I can't deal. I am like, I know I lose my money. Like investing to me meant losing money because I had to let go and I had to release. Guys, when I overcame my fear of investing and how I did that was to educate myself because we are afraid of things we don't understand. I always thought I would lose money and now I'm making money from my investments so it's it's very helpful to deal with your traumas and to understand where they are coming from um and and that is really going to serve you well so if you underspend um so both extremes are bad if you overspend chronically and even like i mean to the point you'll get into debt or if you have so much money but you're walking around looking homeless those are signs of actually financial trauma now, another sign is extreme discomfort when it comes to discussing money matters. Have you ever just seen people who get completely like undone and uncomfortable the moment people start talking about money? Like if you want to lose a friendship with that person, just bring up a money conversation or ask them how much money they are earning or just any money conversation whatsoever. It's very uncomfortable. Like so you and your friends never talk about money. If they're talk In fact, you will pull away from social circles because of just that fact like if they're like oh we need to plan a trip and they're like if we are planning a trip and we are all paying for it that will mean like money conversations you literally pull away from groups of people or friends or circles where money is something that you guys might end up discussing that is a sign that you have a level of financial trauma and you need to kind of like figure out like what is it that i'm so afraid of is it exposure like i remember i also had tendencies of a bit of discomfort um and for me, it was because I was embarrassed. I used to feel like everyone just has money. Everyone is a trust fund baby and they came from money. Because even where I used to live as a child, like, I, I honestly remember just being the poorest child in the neighborhood. I would wear hand-me-downs from my neighbors okay like my friend my mom's friend whose daughter is a bit older than me has this you know nice dress it's still very new um so like uh say like for instance let's call her shiko would be wearing it and then eventually when the mom is like trying to declutter that um you know donate the clothes to the neighbors and i was the neighbors so i'd wear hand-me-downs and like someone else would see me and be like ah like those are some of the things i remember guys um and so i had a lot of like embarrassment like anytime money conversations would come up i'd just be like i will just i know i'm the poorest person here so when us guys have been asked like how much can we contribute for the trip or how much i'd be like i'm not comfortable having this discussion because i felt like i would actually just be exposed as like i'd look like i'm poor or i'm lacking and things and most of it was really just in my head because the more i started opening up and i got out of my head and i realized that my net worth wasn't my self-worth and i completely detached myself from it i started realizing that a lot of these worries and fears were actually in my head yeah um so if you find yourself like very uncomfortable, it's either because either someone did something to you, like you exposed some financial information that was used against you, or you have a fear of exposure, like either like someone will view you or start viewing you differently because now they know your financial situation. That is financial trauma. Okay. And that is dangerous because some deals I've gotten and some good amazing opportunities i've gotten i've gotten them because i've had a money conversation with the right person okay and then the last tell say tells telltale sign that you may have financial trauma is a struggle mentality let me explain this i have 
a couple of people I know who intentionally put themselves in difficult situations. Like for instance, people who believe that if they get a loan, it will push them to work hard because they have an obligation to pay. It is the same mindset that makes people take like, for instance, sometimes I may ask people, why, um, why would you put money in this particular, um, let's say like a Chama group or this particular insurance policy, as opposed to like these other investments that are better returned. Uh, you're in control of your money and most of them are saying like no i want to put myself in a you know i want an investment that forces me to um you know to contribute so you lock yourself up in some long-term commitment that may or may not be a very good choice just because you want like to be forced to contribute or you even i you take a loan and you don't necessarily like quite need it but your mindset is that if i know i have a loan i know this thing will keep me up at night i know i will work hard and so i will never not have money because i need to pay this loan like i've in my line of work i've met a lot of people who think like that so if you associate like if money for you is associated like for you to make money you must put yourself like in a struggle position like either like um sign up for a 20-year uh education policy or endowment policy or get into this chama that you're like yeah i know i shouldn't be here but like i know this will force me to contribute that really shows that you're really not in control of your finances or even your emotions or your impulses when it comes to financial matters all right and so if if you've ever like related or you relate to any one of these telltale signs there are solutions and there are ways that you can work around your money trauma or your poverty trauma and it's very simple the only way to deal with trauma or the easiest way to deal with trauma is to first of all identify or accept that you are traumatized for whatever reason for me it's my upbringing for other people it can be like a bad marriage or a bad partnership it could be losing money for one reason or the other i think it is important that you understand that money is not just about how much you have it really is about what you do with what you have and what you do with money is highly affected by your subconscious mind when it comes to money decisions it is affected by your money personality it is affected by what you think or believe you know there are people who think money doesn't like there are people who have such like a, a, a scarcity mindset they don't believe um that they can even earn more than what they're earning they think people who have a lot of money are like money laundering or they're doing illegal stuff like if that's your mindset around money then money will never come to you because you're not even in a mental or emotional state to be able to step up into your rightful place and do what you need to do to actually get to where you need to be right and so you need to first of all identify um is it a scarcity mindset that i have is it fear of losing money is it a fear of investing is it a fear of exposure and then intentionally work on those uh, on debunking those lies and debunking those myths right and and let me tell you guys between when i left employment which was like 2019 and that's when i started taking my personal finance seriously and when i actually started this business that i run today a lot of things have changed. I never for a single day thought like it was impossible for me to think that earning 50k or 100k was possible for me. I used to think like that is the epitome. And now that I'm charging times, times, times that to train and coach people and corporates like I feel like the moment I started working on my money mindset and I started releasing money and accepting that I don't know and actually exposing myself and interacting with people who know what they're doing with their money, my mind was opened to a whole new world of possibilities. And like the amount of money I've been able to make, a lot of it isn't about my qualifications because I don't even have a t that much years of experience. Neither am I so old that someone can say, oh, you know, she has 20 years of experience. A lot of it has to do with the fact that I've been able to really come to myself to really heal the unhealthy money mindsets and beliefs that I had and even beliefs about my ability or my capability to make money, right? And when I've been able to, like I see money opportunities everywhere because my money mindset is healed.
right and so in places where i'd be i'd previously see um lack or no opportunity at all i no longer think um you know i can't afford this or i can't have it my mindset has now changed to how can i right so before i'd hear oh you know people make passive income of 50k per month i'd be like hey, i know that's not me i'm not there like that's not my level but the truth of the matter is like i could get there i have gotten there in less than three years right um and it's because of that change of mindset instead of saying i can't make passive income or i can't get out of debt or i can't recover from this trauma it's how can i so when you stop from like when you stop seeing impossibility and you start asking different questions like how can i make passive income how can i generate additional streams of income how can i get out of debt right um that is ideally what brings you from point a to point b to point c to point d so and then finally i would also say like detach your um detach your net or rather your net worth from your self-worth you're not your self-worth is not equals what is in your bank account it really is about like who you are as a person your values and all that so there are days i'm broke like their months have been hella broke but i've not like now hidden from people or decided i won't show up in some places just because i don't have money i have relationships um and i've created people around my space where i can comfortably say i can't afford this babe will you pay for me if you don't i'm not gonna be able to come so recognize the um the trauma um try find out where the trauma is coming from and commit to actually working on it and undoing that either with replacing the bad mindsets with the good mindsets exposing yourself talking to a therapist getting a financial coach and eventually you're able to overcome the money trauma all right so let me know in the comment section if this was helpful for you if you have any questions or comments drop them down below i'm going to be responding to them and let me know which you know what are some of your money habits that you believe emanate from a particular uh, poverty or financial trauma and what are you doing to work on it if you guys can work on that i believe you'll have sorted 50 percent of the biggest reason why we never achieve financial abundance thank you so much for watching remember to share this video like it um and also subscribe so that you may be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next episode of finance friday